I can imagine genetically modified crops that would contribute to the kind of sustainable agriculture that I'm describing. We don't have them now. And, they're not, and, and by and large, they're not being worked on. I mean, Pam Ronald may tell you something else when she comes here. But basically, technologies don't operate in isolation. They're, they're contextual. And the context of the big uh, uh, GM crops we have today are monocultures. They are designed specifically. I mean, all the money goes into corn and soy, more corn and soy. Roundup Ready soy, BT corn, or now Roundup Ready corn. Um, and essentially what we're using GM to do is to um, allow farms to, monocultures to get even bigger. One of the mysteries of genetic engineering, and you should ask Ron and uh, 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 Pam Ronald about it, is that, you know, every, if you read the back page ads of, of Monsanto, they talk about, you know, we need, we need genetic engineering to increase the yield uh, because we have a fixed land base, 10 billion people coming, we need GE to increase yield. That sounds good, but look at the history. The history of GE, they've been at it for 20 years. They have not increased yield. That's not what they do. Ask a farmer, and they will say, no, it's not about increased yield. What it's about is, I can handle more land because I don't have mm -hmm. to do the three sprayings of herbicide. I can handle more land because if there's an outbreak of European corn borer over there, I'm covered. I don't even have to pay attention to it because the plant will put out the pesticide. So the thing to be, to be careful about, and this is what I would have talked to Stuart about, is that a lot of GE is being sold to us uh, based on uh, a future promise that I don't even think they're working on. Um, we are being sold a pig and a poke with, um, uh, to use a farmer expression, that I don't even understand. Um, <laughs> I meant to Google that. Um, what is a poke? Um, what? It's a bag. A bag. It's a bag. You can't see the pig you're buying. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's the right analogy. We're being sold genetically modified seed in a poke. Um, <laughs> You know, if, if Monsanto is really serious about using its crops to solve problems, um, they won't be working on basically what are essentially band-aids on monocultures. Um, so, you know, I think we talk altogether too much about it. Mm -hmm. um, I think it gets way too much attention, and that's why I, I didn't talk about it. Um, but the, the increases in yield we have seen over the last 20 years have all been from conventional breeding, which is withering on the vine because it doesn't get support. But there, we can solve these problems with conventional breeding. Um, so I'm not raising alarms about the health risks. I'm not even raising alarms about the environmental risks, although there are some. Um, what I'm suggesting is that this is really a very good business for a, a small handful of companies, um, and that the real key to genetic engineering is control of intellectual property mm -hmm. of the food crops that we depend on. This is why they do it. And if we had open source genetic engineering, if we had genetic engineering that was really being applied to um, uh, making the system more sustainable rather than more brittle, which is essentially what it's doing, you know, I, I, I'm open to, to learning about it. Um, you know, it, it, it's possible. I mean, maybe you can figure out a way to increase the photosynthetic efficiency of, of plants. Um, but the other thing I would insist on, besides open source mm -hmm. uh, for the intellectual property, is freedom to study it. And one of the real, you know, Monsanto and these companies say that this is the most, you see, you got me started on this, sorry. I, I do have a lot to say about it. Um, that, uh, you know, this is the most studied, most regulated food in history. Mm -hmm. um, the fact is that uh, you, as an independent scientist, are not allowed to study a Monsanto mm -hmm. product. Right. Um, you are simply forbidden, and if you want to do a, a test on the environmental or health implications of genetically modified soy or corn or whatever, you must sign a contract that gives Monsanto prior approval before you can publish. Mm -hmm. And just two months ago, uh, crop scientists around the world signed a letter saying we can't study this stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, we need uh, the ability to, you know, really shine the light of science on this thing and not let Monsanto control all that information. So 